So it's just one set up. Holds on, yeah. Good morning. Once again, I welcome everybody here um, as we uh, are at least tuning in, as we gather for this Friday of the octave of Easter. So we begin with the entrance antiphon. The Lord led his people in hope while the sea engulfed their foes. Hallelujah. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, as we gather and prepare for these sacred mysteries by acknowledging our sin, and we ask God for forgiveness. Lord Jesus, who came to call sinners, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Christ Jesus, who healed the sick, Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy. And Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. And again, as we continue this celebration of the Easter day of the solemnity, we um, recite together the glory, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who gave us the Paschal Mystery and the covenant to establish for reconciling the human race, so dispose our minds, we pray, that what we celebrate by professing the faith we may express in deeds through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After the crippled man had been cured, while Peter and John were still speaking to the people, the priest, the captain of the temple guard, and the Sadducees confronted them, disturbed that they were teaching the people and proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection of the dead. They laid hands on Peter and John and put them in custody until the next day, since it was already evening. But many of those who heard the word came to believe and the number of men grew to about 5,000. On the next day, their leaders, elders, and scribes were assembled in Jerusalem with Annas, the high priest, Caiaphas, John, Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly class. They brought them into their presence and questioned them, by what power or by what name have you done this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, answered them, leaders of the people and elders, if we are being examined today about a good deed done to a cripple, namely, by what means he, had, he was saved, then all of you and all the people of Israel should know that it was in the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. In his name, this man stands before you healed. He is the stone rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. There is no salvation through anyone else, nor is there any other name under heaven given to the human race by which we are to be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The 
response. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Let the house of Israel say, his mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, his mercy endures forever. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. O Lord, grant salvation. O Lord, grant prosperity. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has given us light. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. trip up to Lake Erie 
and, and go walleye fishing or maybe um, later in the year perch fishing. So, so we would do that. So, so often I, I know that um, uh, among fisher people, fishermen, that there often are stories, you know, the great fishing tales about the ones that got away or, you know, the day they went out and, and, and caught nothing or the time they went out and got their limit in almost no time. I mean, so just all of those kind of um, fishing tales. This year, perhaps the, the tale will be about all those fish in the Maumee River, all the walleye they're waiting to be kept, caught, but that the fishermen weren't allowed to go there because of the stay at home and social distancing. But so, so we often think about um, those kind of stories, you know, and, and it struck me in the gospel in reading that, I mean, that you can almost imagine a couple um, fishermen standing around telling stories. You know, it's like, oh, you remember that day we went out? And, oh, yeah, John was there, and, and, and Tom, and, and, and Uncle Mark, and, you know, that once were there. Um, and especially if they had an experience like that, you know, of being out there trying to fish all day and caught nothing. And then as they were coming to the shore, there was somebody to say, oh, you know, try off the other side of the boat. And they caught so many. And then it would just be a, a story that would be repeated um, for, for, for years. You know, so as we hear these stories um, of the resurrection appearance, or these stories of the early apostles after the time of Jesus, it invites us, I think, to consider what kind of stories or how we experience or um, proclaim the, the story of Easter. I was like, have we told anybody about that? Do we just assume everybody automatically knows? I mean, certainly it's a great gift that we're able to um, be able to at least unite in mass and, and hear the readings or our, our, on our own be able to find the scripture readings for the day and, and read them. So there are, are ways that those stories of our faith continue to be told to us and, and that we're able to continue to to reflect on them and, and wrestle with them and be inspired by them, you know, as they help um, encourage us to believe in Jesus, that he really is um, risen from the dead, that he is our Lord and Savior, and that he offers us such a great abundance. So again, as we heard in, in the gospel, it's like when they listen to Jesus, they have so many fish that they can't hardly pull it in. So we think about that, it's just the abundance of God's love. And, and the beauty of what faith and, and what God wants to provide for all of us. Again, not to say that there will never be any trials or sufferings. We know prior to the resurrection was the passion, the, 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 the suffering, the agony, the crucifixion and death. So we know that we will continue to face trials and challenges in life. But we also have that hope and that assurance of just the abundance of, of life the abundance of hope and goodness that is offered to us in Jesus Christ. So may we rejoice in these stories of our faith. May they lead us to have that hope and security that is offered to us in, in Jesus Christ. And may we find ways to, um, to share with others the, the beauty of our faith and how um, important and, and what a great blessing it is in our lives. solemnity we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life for the world to come. Amen. Gracious and mighty God, we give thanks that you are ever present to us, continuing to offer us inspiration and hope all our days with um, gratitude for the abundance of your goodness and blessing we offer our needs and our prayers and we pray for the church throughout the world that this throughout this uh, easter season it might be a beacon of light and hope proclaiming the resurrection and life of jesus to all we pray to the lord lord hear our prayer we pray for an increase in religious vocation that men and women will be open to this call from God in their life and generously respond. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our world, for our president and the government leaders, for leaders of nations around the world, that they might find ways to work together in, um, in, in addressing serious um, health issues these days, the coronavirus, and, and other issues that plague our world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those um, looking forward to receiving the sacraments in the church, for children preparing for First Communion and Confirmation, and for the adults planning to um, join the church. May God continue to inspire them and sustain them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for people who have grown weak in faith or um, struggle to find God or, or find hope in Him, that the Lord might touch their hearts through the kindness and charity and, and uh, sharing of, of the Easter message from people of faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the doctors and nurses and health care providers, those who constantly put their lives in, at risk um, in, a, in a special way as they treat people with the coronavirus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for children and families that they might know of a sincere care and love for each other and, and find ways to encourage each other in holiness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we remember today the living and deceased members of the parish. May all who have died know that fullness of life and blessed joy with God in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pause to remember your own prayers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty and ever-living God, we give thanks that you are dear to us. We give thanks in our assurance of your resurrection and life. We ask in faith that you hear our prayers and answer them according to your will through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we, have, we offer you, fruit of the earth, and work of human beings. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever.
us in our youth, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work of human beings that will become our spiritual bread. Blessed be God forever. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good, the good of all this holy church. Perfect within us, O Lord, we pray, the solemn exchange brought about by these paschal offerings that we may be drawn from earthly desires to a longing for the things of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with pastoral joy, Every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. O Sana in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. O Sana in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, stating, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. 
do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Michael, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O oh Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Annie our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you in your compassion, O merciful Father. Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. Let us conquer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. 
have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Jesus said to his disciples, Come and eat. And he took bread and gave it to them. Alleluia. Also, I know that so many of you just long to be here and be able to actually receive Holy Communion. Um, hopefully you have um, been able to find the, um, the, the prayer for spiritual communion. So that we're able to gather or to recognize that desire for the Lord and our longing for him spiritually to be able to receive him. So I um, found, found a version of that, so you can say that along with me, or if you have that, maybe you've said that already. But so there's this um, act of a spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite my, myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. pray. Keep safe, O Lord, we pray, those whom you have saved by your kindness, that redeemed by the passion of your Son, they may rejoice in his resurrection, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we'll conclude again with the prayers of St. Michael. Holy Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. 
be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do you, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the divine power, thrust into hell Satan and all the unable spirits who wander through the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. And just a final uh, uh, announcement, if you will, or uh, an invitation that, um, of course, we'll live stream the weekend masses Saturday at 4 o'clock and then Sunday at 10.30. So um, hopefully you can join us virtually for um, either of those masses. And then also on Sunday, with it being Divine Mercy Sunday, we are planning to live stream, live stream the, the Divine Mercy Sunday service, prayer and chaplain and benediction um, on Sunday at 3. So you're invited to also join us virtually for that.